All right, good morning. My name is Mary, and uh, I'm here to give the children a little story. And as always, you're welcome to listen in. If you are just joining us in this series, you might wonder what a snowman is doing up here. I thought we might need to be reminded that it's winter. <laughs> that was back in January. We have not needed to be reminded. But we are looking at different characters in the Bible, and we are seeing what their personalities would be like, are like, or what we can think they were like, and then see what we can learn from them, uh, both maybe usually on the good side and maybe a few cautions. And then be thinking, kids, if you think maybe this sounds a little bit like you. Okay, well, our uh, character today is named Miriam, and she is an only child. Raise your hand if you're an only child. Anyone? No only children in here? Oldest, oldest, not only, sorry, oldest. Oldest? Okay, I thought, you got to be, okay, there we go. Got some oldest children. Um, so Miriam was the oldest, and how old are you, Connor? Five. When we first hear about Miriam, she's five. Isn't that crazy? She would have been your age. And um, what we're going to see in a couple of stories about Miriam are the things that uh, we thought kind of look sound like her personality. She was protective. She loved a challenge. She wasn't afraid of a challenge. And she liked to fight injustice or things that she thought were not fair. <laughs> and the story that we first he read about, Miriam, um, do you remember the children of Israel were God's special people set apart so that God could work through them to tell the whole world that he was the one true God? But at this point in the story, they're slaves in Egypt, so they had to do whatever the Egyptians told them to do, or the head of the Egyptians was called a pharaoh. And uh, the thing about this is that the children of Israel were really healthy and strong. God was blessing them, so when they would have families, they would have big families, and they'd be really healthy, and they were getting stronger and more and more in number. And the pharaoh was thinking, man, if they decide to turn on us, they'll be the ones in charge and we'll have to do what they say. So he didn't like that. So he made a really bad rule and he said, if there's a baby boy born to the children of Israel, don't let him live. Isn't that an awful thing? That's an awful thing. But so many of them still did because God was watching over them. And Miriam was in a family where this you know, was happening. She was the older sister. She's about five. She had a younger brother, Aaron, who was three. Is that about your age, Ethan? Yeah. There you go. And, um, and then there was another baby born. And of course, Miriam's mother didn't want him to not live. So she hid him for as long as she could, and she put him in a basket. You probably remember some of this story. Put him in a basket and put him on the river. And I know she was praying that he would be okay. Well, she sent little Miriam out, five years old, to watch over him. So that shows us, okay, first of all, Miriam was pretty protective. She didn't mind a challenge, and she knew it wasn't fair, this rule that the Pharaoh had made. So she hid in the bushes, and Pharaoh's daughter saw this basket, and maybe a little cry came out of that, and she looked in there, and she knew it was a little Hebrew baby. And Miriam steps out of the bushes. She didn't stay hiding. She was brave. She stepped out and she said, tell me to find someone to look after him right now. And the Pharaoh's daughter said, oh, yes, please. And so Miriam was able to take her little brother back to their mom for another stretch of time. And then they had to give him over to Pharaoh's daughter. So that shows us that she was all of those things in that experience, wasn't she? And then later on, this is like, hmm, quite a few years later, they um, are getting treated really badly by the Egyptians, and they were made to do all the hard work, and they were given less and less tools to do it, and just more and more demands. And so Moses, at this point, comes back from where he's been, and he's going to lead them out of Egypt to the Promised Land. And um, 
I was thinking that on this particular journey, I bet you Miriam was kind of excited. I just get the idea. She would think this was kind of exciting because they all packed up, and there was a lot of them, and they all started going toward where they were going to escape. And then when they got to this place, it was like there was water in front of them, mountains around them, and the Pharaoh changed his mind and sent all of his people after them. So they're looking like, what are we going to do? We're caught. But God made a way for them. Remember, they went through the Red Sea on dry ground, and then the Egyptian people didn't make it. <laughs> and, um, and they came to the other side. And it said that Miriam led all the women in a song of praise to God. And I think that shows us that she was a leader, right? She was probably on that journey thinking, this has not been fair the way they've treated us. And sure, we'll go on, a, on an escapade and get out of here. That would be a fun challenge. And then she was leading them all in prayer to uh, praise to God. Now where Miriam got into a little bit of trouble <laughs> is that I think Miriam liked to be in charge. Maybe as an oldest child, you might say, eh, yeah, sometimes that's, I'm kind of used to being in charge, especially of siblings, right? So Miriam was the oldest, then Aaron, then Moses, and God was speaking really directly to Moses. He was the one who God was giving all the, the instructions to, right? And Miriam started grumbling about that, maybe, getting a little grumpy about it, and said to Aaron, you know, so special about Moses. I mean, we're older. <laughs> and I'm going to leave all the details of that story out because it's, it's a big story too, but if you want to read about it, it's in Numbers 12. And God straightened Miriam and Aaron out very clearly and said, I am speaking to Moses and you will do what, what he instructs you to do. So that's something to be careful about if you have this kind of personality is that you remember who is in charge and you don't take over when you're not supposed to. So I was thinking maybe like as a kid, if you're in school and, and you're all sitting there and the teacher has her back turned because maybe she's writing on the chalkboard and the wind blows something off the shelf and it breaks and the teacher turns around and says, Jonathan, you're in trouble for breaking that. And everybody's saying, no, he didn't, no, he didn't. And the teacher says, I don't want to hear anything about it. Jonathan, you're in trouble. And you're sitting there thinking, that isn't fair. He didn't do it. And you're feeling for Jonathan. And, and you want to get this straightened out. But the teacher has said, nope, I don't want to talk about it. You're in trouble. Do they still give detentions? They, that's an old thing. They don't do that anymore. <laughs> but anyway, what's a detention, they're thinking. Um, yeah, some people have gotten them. There we go. And. Uh, and so what I think would be the better thing to do if you're like a Miriam is that you would wait till maybe class is over and then you just go quietly to your teacher and you say, Mrs. Johnson, I know you weren't able to see what actually happened, but I just want to tell you it wasn't Jonathan. It was the wind that blew that off and he really didn't do anything and break it. And I think Mrs. Johnson, if she's not having a really bad day, <laughs> would listen and be glad to hear that she wants to correct that and not... Uh, and not be unfair to Jonathan. So anyway, those are our lessons to learn from Miriam today. Think about whether that's you and uh, what you can learn from her story. And then I'll invite all the children to go upstairs for some crafts and activities and great music.